Okay, so we're uh, asked to figure out where it's increasing, so we have to take the derivative. So how do we do that? Product rule with this guy and that guy, right? Yes. So it is the first one, 9 root x times the derivative of the second one, which is? Uh, e to the negative x times negative 1. E to the negative x times negative 1, so I'll be e to the negative, negative e to the negative x, right? Plus the second one times the derivative of the first, which is? What did you say? Uh, like one half. <laughs> four point five x. Okay. Four point five x to the negative one yeah. half. Right? Yeah. I don't know where. I don't know where you did. Nine five x. Okay. So let's simplify that a little bit. Uh, e to the negative x I can put on the bottom, right? Yeah. So it's negative nine root x over e to the x plus same thing with that uh, and I can take the x to the one half and put it on the bottom also so 4.5 over square root of x e to the x like that right does that make sense so I just rearranged the negative exponent things okay so then if I want to get a common denominator it's going to be really easy I just need to throw a uh, square root of x on the bottom of this Austin Oh, we appreciate you. Um, <laughs> and so if I threw a square root of x on the bottom of that, then I have to throw a square root of x on the top of that, correct? Yep. Okay, right, so now we have a uh, common denominator, and of course the square root of x times the square root of x is just x, so it's negative 9x plus 4.5 over square root of x e to the x, right? So that is our derivative. How do we use that to find the intervals on which f is increasing? Graph it. Right, we're doing the sign chart thing. Okay. So uh, where will this equal zero? Um, the top equals zero. So negative nine x plus four point five equals zero means x has to equal negative 1 by 5 divided by negative 9, so x equals 1 half. Okay, so if I make my little sign chart here, I know it's going to be 0 at 1 half. It's also undefined at uh, 0, right? Because if I plug in 0 down here, then I have a 0 on the bottom, and I can't do that. So I also have uh, undefined at 0. So here's undefined. So what do you want to do now? What number would you like to plug in? One is a great number to plug in. Um, so if you plug one into here, then uh, if I plug in one into the derivative, what would I get? Right, and the main thing is that it would come out to be negative, so that means that over here it is decreasing, okay? Now we have to be careful with that whole undefined thing. Um, so let's just check in between 0 and 1 half and to the left of 0 also, just to make sure, okay? Uh, so that's unfortunately kind of inconvenient, um, but if you plug in like 0.25, a quarter of this is going to be less than half it, right? So that's going, to, that's going to come out to be positive. Does that make sense? Okay, which is what you'd expect. And so that means it's going to be increasing in here. The question is, does it change over the undefined thing? So let's plug in uh, negative one. Okay, so that makes this top part positive. Oh, can't. So what happens uh, when we try to plug in a negative number into the derivative or into the original function? It dies, yes. So this function is actually undefined everywhere from zero to negative infinity, okay? So good thing we checked. So it is increasing from zero to 
one half, and yeah, and it is decreasing from uh, one half to infinity, right? Right. Uh, okay, find the local maximum value of f. Well, if it is increasing and then decreasing, but that's not the local maximum value, that's where it happens. So it happens at x equals one half, but to figure out what that maximum value is, we have to plug it in to the original equation. And so I will let you uh, calculator kids figure out what nine times the square root of one half times e to the negative one half is. I'm not so sure I know. I don't know off the top of my head, you yeah, know, no. Uh, no, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, if you plug in one half in here, then since it's a negative exponent, that moves it to the bottom, right? So it'd be uh, nine root one half over e to the one half, but e to the one half is the square root of e. So you got what? Okay, does it say in the problem how many decimals are supposed to answer? No. No? Okay, can I get two though just for funsies? 3.86. 3.86. Okay, so the maximum is approximately 3.86. And we know it's a maximum because increasing and then decreasing, right? Yeah. Okay, find the inflection point. How do we find the inflection point? Second derivative set equal to zero is the inflection point. So Negative nine x plus four point five. Negative nine x plus four point five over was it the square root of x times e to the x? Okay. Okay. So this is a quotient rule, right? And we're gonna get a product rule inside the quotient rule. So that's exciting. It is gonna be glorious. So it's low. D high minus high D low. Oh, Christ, so we can do that together. <laughs> so the derivative of the square root of x e to the x. Have to go product rule. So first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So what's the derivative of the square root of x again? Wow, so I'm going to make that just uh, like that, right? So root x e to the x plus uh, e to the x Well, <laughs> no, but we have to send it to zero to find the inflection point. Uh, no, just the top. I kind of wish things would cancel out. Yeah, so I think we might be uh, wanting to simplify here a little bit. So I'm going to just focus on the top part. Negative 9 root x e to the x. Oh my goodness, we have to foil that? Are you kidding me? Uh, so I'm going to change this to plus. I set that, set that uh, negative sign through. Is that okay? That's fine. Yikes. Um, so I have to foil that out. So first times first is going to be 9x root x e to the x. Outside is going to be 9x e to the x over 2 root x. Inside is going to be negative 4.5 root x e to the x. And last is going to be negative 4.5 e to the x over 2 root x. Uh, there's a reason why it looks confusing. Two things do. Two things do? Well, they don't cancel it. Okay, well, I'm going to set this equal to zero, right? I don't see anything that's... Oh, um, 
I think though what the first thing I'm going to do since I set this equal to zero is I'm going to multiply by two root x to get rid of those things. So if I, mul if I multiply this by two root x, that gives me uh, negative 18x e to the x, right? If I multiply this by two root x, that gives me 18 x squared e to the x. Multiply that by two root x, then they cancel. I multiply that by two root x, I get negative nine x e to the x. And I multiply that by two root x, I get negative four point five e to the x. So now, can we at least combine some things? it was 9x root x. Oh, okay. So the root x times the root x made x, and then the x times x made x squared. Okay. So there's only one Can you x. factor out an e to the x? Oh, nice. Let's factor out an e to the x, oh. and then, well, hold on. You got a great idea, because if we factor out an e to the x and basically divide everything by e to the x, zero divided by e to the x is zero, and then all these e to the x's will just go away. So good thinking, Sophie. Okay. Now we have a simple quadratic. 18x squared. But can't you get rid of the nines? I, I keep wondering why we're not. This one and this one? Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I have 18x squared minus 18x minus 4.5. So the point of inflection is that x equals 1.2, y equals 3. Okay, uh, And then that also gives us a point on our new sign chart that is the second derivative sign chart. We still don't care about anything to the left of 0 because that's not in the domain. But if we need to find concavity, then we need to uh, deal with this thing here. So what number do you want to plug in? 1. And where are we going to plug it into? second derivative. That, unfortunately, is not the second derivative. That's what it is when you set it equal to zero. This is the second derivative. Okay? But remember, we only have to figure out positive or negative. We don't have to figure out an uh, actual value. So if I plug one into the bottom, would it be positive or negative? That would be positive. So I'm going to give it a plus down here. So that's done. Okay? If I plug one into here, oh, maybe I do need to kind of figure things out. That's going to be negative 9e, right? So that's going to be negative 9e. If I plug 1 into here, then you get negative 4.5, right? Yeah. Which times that negative will be plus 4.5. Times, if you plug 1 into here, what is that? e plus a half an e. So then you get three and a half e's there. So which is bigger, the negative nine e's or the 4.5 times three and a half e's? What's 4.5 times three halves? Yeah, something. So negative nine e is going to be bigger than this, so the top is going to come out to be negative, right? What you got? Okay, so that means when we plug in 1, we get negative, so that means it's concave down there, and it's concave up there. So 
that's the answers to E. looks like the same thing. It was a different function. This time we got a little natural log action going. Let's saw that. Okay, so let's find the interval of increase. So once again, we have to take the derivative. We might as well take the derivative of the second derivative right off the bat. But what's the derivative of natural log? One over this. And then times the derivative of this stuff. So that's times 4x cubed. Uh, and so that's going to be 4x cubed over x to the fourth plus 27. Okay? So to find uh, the increase and decrease and all that, what do we do? That is equal to zero. So I have to take 4x cubed over x fourth plus 27 and set it equal to zero. Now before we go rampaging down that path, is there anything that we have to worry about as far as undefined in this function? I'll tell you right now, you may not know this, but you can take the natural log of a negative number x to the fourth plus 27 ever going to be negative? No. Uh, is x to the fourth plus 27 ever going to be zero? No. So this function is uh, continuous everywhere, so we're okay. When is it going to equal zero? At zero. So this is an easy one, or it seems to be, which is kind of scary. So zero is the thing in the middle. Um, so now I need to pick a number. One. If you plug that into the derivative, you get a positive or negative? Positive. Positive. So that means it is increasing over here and decreasing over here. Okay? So the answer to A, find the interval of increase. Isn't it what? Oh, because this is a, ooh, it's a odd root. Good point though, we didn't think about this at all. The zero has a multiplicity of three, right? So if it had a multiplicity of two or four or whatever, then yeah, it would be increasing here and increasing here. But since it has an odd multiplicity of changes, just like way um, Okay, so it is increasing from zero to infinity, right? It's decreasing from negative infinity to zero. And this time it says find the local minimum. Uh, it's going to be at zero. If you plug zero into there, then you want to plug into the natural log of 27, which is zero comma e to the what power equals 27. Okay, nice. So you got that. Uh, four, six, 
16 x what? And I'll also have to distribute that, so that's going to give me uh, 12x to the 6 plus 27x squared, all over this thing that nobody cares about. Say again? Because that number was too big for me to do in my head, so I subconsciously ignored it and forgot that it was actually there. What is uh, 27 times 12? Uh, okay, and then we can do a little combining of like terms on the top, right? I on fire. <laughs> now that parametric equation stuff is pretty nasty, isn't it? I don't want to be a oh, parametric equation solver. You don't want to be a parametric equationist? Does four go to three twenty four? Does four go to three twenty four? Yes. 81 times, and you can factor out an x squared, so let's divide everything by negative 4x squared, shall we? Am I wrong? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, come on, long division, 4 goes into 32 yeah. 8 times, 4 goes into 4 once. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. Okay. I felt bad about missing the 324 there, the 27 and 12, so I had to make that part. Uh, so if we divide both sides by negative 4x squared, then that will give me x4 to the 4th minus 81. Now that's convenient, equals 0. So what does x have to equal? Up? What is the 4th root of 81? Mm -hmm. How about negative 3? Oh, right? Okay. So 3 or negative 3 will both work. Okay. Um, all right, so that is uh, basically D says find the inflection points. So your job now is to plug those values back into the original function. Do the fourth root of negative oh, three or two must be the same again. Yeah. So what is the natural log eight. of what is it? Four point six eight. Right. Nice. Cody, are you productive today? Super productive. We're all kind of freaked out. Um, okay, then for E and F we need to find the concave up and concave down. So we have uh, yeah. Our two inflection points, nice. Is there anything weird we needed to think about with these inflection points as far as their multiplicity, since Kayla warned us about that last time? No, wait, their units are going to be the same. So is it going to be the same on both sides? Should be. Yeah, because when you uh, take it to the fourth power, the negative is going to turn into a positive, so it's not going to change. Uh, okay, so you're plugging in zero. Well, we don't really care. Is it positive or negative? Positive, sorry. Wait a minute. Where are we plugging zero into? Don't oh. plug zero into the... I plugged into the wrong equation. You plug zero into the second derivative, and what happens when I plug zero into this? I get zero, so what, what did we do? We left out an inflection point, yeah, because when we divided everything through by x squared, we lost that as a solution. So the moral of that story is zero. never, never divide. We Wait, should have. Can, can't we just add zero? Yeah, but I'm just saying, algebraically speaking, we shouldn't have divided. We should have just factored out that negative 4x squared and then said this equals zero or this equals zero, and then we would have noticed that zero is also a possible answer. We are so abusive. So now we need to find that other inflection point. Just okay. Yeah, we had that on the last problem, 3.30. So that uh, minimum that we came up with was also an inflection point. So the graph is going to look back. Um, okay, so we have to pick a different number. One. One. Um, 
So th is this our is this our derivative here? Our second derivative? Okay. So if you plug one into that, you're gonna get a positive number. Okay. Um, so that means that in here it's concave up. And then since this is multiplicity two, doesn't that mean that if I plug four into there, it'll also be positive, or does it flip around and become negative? I don't know. Just plug it in. Should we plug it in? Plug in four. <laughs> into the second derivative. So negative four times four to the six plus three twenty-four times. What's she doing? Yeah. So does it change to be concave down then, Kayla? What? Does it change to be concave down? Yeah, because obviously as we plug in bigger numbers here, this sixth power thing that's being, you know, turning into negative is going to overrule the squared thing here. So that means that this part is going to be concave down. Yeah, it's negative. What about the negative one? That's going to be the same as the positive one, right? Because of the even multiplicity. So this is going to be concave up, and that's going to be concave down. Okay? So you ready for the graph? Sure. Wait, do we have to graph it? Yeah, so use this information to graph the function. Okay, so uh, <coughs> give me a scale for the x-axis. What was the, like, I mean, we came out with three here. So you want to just go between, yeah, because that was just at zero. So you want to go from negative five to five. Okay, uh, what's the highest? Uh, y value or lowest y value that we had. I think our highest was something. Seems like it. So we could go negative five to five on that also. We'll be okay. Does that seem right? That's super cool. Or I know it's super cool, huh? Is that um, what? What's the very middle value? Oh, it moves. Uh, so I only wanted the first one, and I could. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I wish you guys all had these on your phones. I'm serious. And then you can make your graphs on your phones and then just email it to me. Turn your sign up that way. I'm getting there. What's the key? Getting there. In a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so give me some points that I know. What's a, like a maximum or a minimum or a point of inflection or something? Okay, 0, 0.3. Is the local minimum? Okay. What else do I have? Okay, what were the y coordinates that went with those? So 3, 4.68, something like that. Negative 3. Uh, when I graph this, it doesn't look like that. And then it goes. Uh, and is that all we know? Uh, I think so. Where is, and is it uh, increasing or decreasing everywhere on the left? Well, if it's concave down. Well, I mean, we, we did a sign chart and figured it out, right? So it's decreasing everywhere to the left of zero, right? Yeah. Uh, and increasing everywhere to the right. And then it was concave down, concave up. So how do we make that happen? So I need it to be concave down. And decreasing. And decreasing. Uh, how do I make this decreasing and concave down? Uh, I can come to a corner. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Concave up like that. Yeah. All right? And then it's concave up. Oh, oh no! Hey, see if you can make that reflect. What? Can you try and make that reflect? You're grabbing that from the bottom. 
Simplify this a little bit, distribute the 2x, so 2x cubed minus, whoops, minus uh, 32x squared plus 128x minus 2x cubed, nice. Uh, what is this, minus 16? Yeah. Yeah, so plus. 16x squared over that other jump. So these x cubes cancel. That's going to be negative 16x squared plus 128x over okay. Alright, now we already know where this function is undefined, right? Where? 8. That's why it has a vertical asymptote there. So keep an eye on that. So we're trying to figure out what? Function is increasing. So I don't want to decrease in the function. All right? So I'm going to take the derivative of 30 to the 0 again. So negative 6 to the next square plus 128 times. Okay, so now I'm going to be careful, learn from my mistakes from last time. Does so 16 go into 128 evenly? Yeah. 
Yeah. How many times? Four. Four. <laughs> Eight. So I'm not going to divide by negative 16x. I'm going to factor out a negative 16x. Okay, so x could equal 0 or x could equal 8, but can't use 8. Can't use 8 because that's not in the domain of the original function. So I've got 0, I've got selection, hold on, at uh, 8. Pick a number. Let's pick a bunch of numbers. This undefined stuff makes me nervous, so I'm reluctant to just say increasing over here, decreasing over there. Because I'm afraid something weird happens with the undefined part. So let's plug in a number in each interval. So 1, if you plug 1 into there, you get a positive number, right? Yeah, but think about the bottom of the derivative. Since it's squared, it's always going to be positive. So it's not going to matter. But that's a good point. So if I plug in 1, I get a positive, right? And that means it's increasing here. If you plug in... 9, that is probably going to be decreasing, huh? Because 9 squared is 81, 81, is that? 81 times 16 is bigger than 9 times 128. So I've got a decreasing over here. So that's why that undefined stuff makes me nervous. And then if I plug in negative 1 over there, what do I get? Negative 16. No, negative, right? So decreasing. So it does play the decreasing, increasing game, but we had to use the undefined it's point. Just the point. Point. No. Um, so where's the function increasing just from 0 to 8? Um, OK, local minimum value. Look at the 
So work on those, and then we'll go over your questions. Uh,